All right, YouTube, back for more. Number four, we were, when I last left you, we were just getting some cotton in here to reinforce the backing on this backing strip here. And we were just getting ready to do another piece when my memory ran out again, which seems to be the popular thing to do these days. So what I'm gonna be doing next is continuing that process. I've got my Q-tip ready to go. Um, a little bit of cotton swab here and if I cut it to the right size this probably wouldn't be necessary but to be perfectly honest it's going to help make it a very strong joint and it's kind of in a weird spot so I'm actually happy to do it so if you guys can't tell that's three drips that went in there and those three drips are going to be spread right throughout that thing sometimes it cooperates better than others lick your finger so it doesn't stick push it into the corner and that's that's a trick then she'll go into the corner and the chemicals will react you'll have what you need just holding it there so it can set up in the right spot okay now as we're going I'm gonna take this piece which of course is the spoiler itself I'm gonna lay it in here and I'm just gonna make sure that we're still flush and so far, so good. And I mean, we got a nice flush joint. There'll be a, there'll be just a small bump, but you know what? I can live with that. Um, I can definitely live with that. That's not a big amount of problem there. So as that tips up, it's going to have something to receive it when it drops back down. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to do that on these, and you guys don't have to watch the same process again. I'll show you when they're all done, though. All right, guys, so we got those four pieces in here between the five uh, wing struts and we've reinforced each of the corners with um, cotton and CA we got everything in there we got the servo mounted um, it's not screwed in yet but it will be here in a minute and basically what we're looking at next is just kind of making sure everything still fits it's important that as you do this process you make sure you didn't have a step where you tripped up okay so then just fold that over and just kind of make sure everything looks about where it needs to be um, and pay no attention to the obvious holes and stuff that's not a big deal we can re we can redo that with some more monocoat obviously it'd be easier if you didn't have to but good luck doing that without damaging the monocoat if you're doing it this way that is so the other thing is I took my uh, cable and I put one drip of CA on there and sprayed it with kicker on the connection point so that it's not likely to come undone but it can be undone just one little drip there and so I can tuck this cable back into the wing so when we heat this up with the iron everything will stick here and then everything that gets wrapped over particularly this is going to prevent the wind from catching up under it and if that doesn't work then we'll actually put a little extra adhesive on there or like I said we'll put some more monocoat on and wrap it but for now that's what we've done and um, we got everything nice and tidy for now so really this thing's ready to be hinged and uh, get the movement down so the next step for us is going to be to fire up the iron. For now I'm going to just use this crappy mono coat and then I'll redo it if I decide I can't handle the look. I could also just use some tape but um, tape is actually pretty heavy and so I'm not going to add it unless I need it. So for now this will be the trick and uh, I'll just basically fold this down and the mono coat's going to want to stretch away from these rip points. So we may end up using some tape right away, but for now this will at least tell us if our hinging 
is going to be what we want of it. Then once that's done, we can go ahead and start doing our positioning of our push rods and all that. Um, we have this reinforcement here and 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 here. And any of those would be fine to push up against. Obviously, we're going to be using this one because that's the one that's going to be touching uh, closest to. So when we're done ironing this stuff, then we'll be able to uh, go ahead and hook up the radio system and get this set up. And that will conclude the video for the moment. And we will have probably a follow-up when everything is working so I can show you how the left and the right are going to work. But there will also be a flight video like usual. Um, I never do a mod video without showing a flight video unless I happen to crash it in some weird way before the testing can be videoed. And I don't think that's happened. I did have some issues with the ASW28 that prevented me from finishing up a video series on that, but it's it's long gone now. The ASW28, uh, the 2.56 meter one. So basically while that iron's heating, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do this, but it's extremely difficult. I've always found it easier to stab the blade into a table and then just run it down. I was just going to try to take that, that sharp edge off on the back. And the sharp edge is here. Alright, cool. So the iron's going to be getting pretty warm now. Yeah, so it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's not totally there. Okay, so... We can zoom in for you guys. So basically, we'll we'll just take this iron and see if we can get it to bite any of this stuff here. We kind of got this cut a little bit short. It's probably gonna want to pull back into that gap. So while this is still warming up, we'll just do this area here. I got it on the highest setting. Just working from the bottom up. I'm not an expert with mono coat. I'm not an expert at all. So this will be probably my fourth or fifth time using this stuff. Which is funny because I've used dope and tissue paper, but I've never used mono coat. I mean, my grandpa's used it on a few of his planes, and I've had to work with it a couple of times, but I've never actually covered a model I built myself that way. So it's kind of a foreign concept to me to have it adhesive backed stuff like this. So if you see me doing things that are wrong, put it in the comments. You're going to do it anyway, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to get this worked out. It's wanting to relax, and so it's doing that little buckling, I think. Just working it back up, working it back up as much as I can. I do want it to get good bonding to this structure, if it's possible, particularly here. And particularly here. And particularly here. because that's going to be noisy if it doesn't. Okay, so just a 100% verified positioning. Um, we obviously sanded off our marks, so we can tell that's forward because it's relieved back a little bit. Okay. So we're getting that laid in position. Make sure we're totally satisfied with the position, left and right. We're hitting this edge, we're hitting all these edges, we're hitting that edge. Okay, cool, so now I should be able to just fold this over and just work my way from the middle across. I'm just going to work it in little circles, working from the seam out. In a little schizophrenic fast there. I need to slow down and just let it work. Ooh, it's looking pretty good. I just hope we didn't lose too much of our hinge joint to allow it to work. Okay, so we'll come back over here and we'll do this other side. And guys, I told you it wouldn't look perfect, but... I 
got a little bit of play there. I need to get that held down a little better. Right on the front side of this hinge. Looks like wherever I got close to it, it's basically breaking. And to be honest, like I said, it's not a big, huge deal. We'll just put a little tape over it if we need to. But I just mostly want to get it together. And what I'll do is if I redo this mono coat, I'll try to cut a piece that's about like this big and just do the whole swath right here. And then I can feel the edge and I can cut it with a knife very cleanly because I have good backing now. Looks like we're still getting kind of a poor bond here. So I might just put a piece of tape in there to reinforce it for the moment. And I'll take the tape off just using just run of the mill. This is pretty high quality stuff, but it's still run of the mill stuff. So we're going to make it a little bit longer than we need. Cut it with some scissors. We'll come back to the workpiece. Nice clean cut here. We're going to hold this down. Work it right there. Pushing at the seam first. Okay. Then I'm going to take and cut, and then rip it back, okay? We're going to push it from the seam forward first, and then from the seam back. And we have a very nice, strong joint now, and that thing's going to want to come closed. And if it doesn't want to come closed, we'll put a rubber band mechanism in it that will pull it closed. But the servo is also going to want to basically pull it closed. So, next step, get the plane hooked back up. We'll see how it works. Throttle cuts on. Throttle sticks down. Tested. Good timer. Okay. Basically. So far, so good. Now it looks like we're not getting enough play because the linkage is not long enough to move it up. So what we're going to have to do is we'll have to do a little, um, probably a brass bushing or something uh, that we can bend a simple lever adapter to go up and then to come back down. And that'll keep things opened and closed as needed and basically... When we give it stick like this to move to roll the plane, it's going to bring this up, it's going to bring it up, and then depending on your spoiler condition, it's just like flap rounds. So that's the way that's going to work. Uh, let's get some stuff out to do that bend real quick on that metal rod. Alright guys, so what we got here is we've got precision metals, brass bushing, which is stock number 1143. 1 16th by 0 0.014 round brass tube which is uh, 1.57 millimeters by 0.355 millimeters and then what we're using inside of it is stock number one uh, stock number 501 0.032 music wire which is 0.81 millimeters so that as you can see they slide in and out of one another so it should make for an easy um, adapter so we're going to take and cut a piece that's commensurate to gluing in here somewhere and we're going to tape it in temporarily. So I'm just going to use my Dremel like tool to cut off a short chunk that's about three eighths of an inch wide or maybe a little bit less. Okay so I got my super dinky little brass piece here. I got a nasty edge on the end. So I've learned, just use your X-Acto knife to deburr the hole. And before you dig into it too much, get a piece of your stock that's supposed to go through it. Because once this thing's kind of glued or taped in there, it's going to be a pain in the butt to test. And it looks like this end has been marred up a little bit. So I actually just go to this end. Just make sure it's going to slip in there. And sure enough, it does. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just slip and we'll, we'll make a couple of quick bends. And then this piece will become our linkage from the servo. And we're going to have a little bit that bends at the top, probably back to itself. 
and that just kind of keeps it from falling out um, but not so much that we could never ever get it out again you know and then what we want to do is we want to probably try to hold the bushing without crushing it because we want it to move free and we're going to make our bend okay alright so now we have our mounting point and now we have our linkage so the linkage it needs to be mounted on here somewhere but we need to make sure it doesn't touch and hit so what we'll do is we'll, we'll probably watch the throw of the servo to the maximum top point there and we got a little bit of place this isn't mounted yet so I'll probably put it something like this and we'll see what we can get out of that I'm gonna grab just a small piece of this uh, tape to hold it on temporarily until we've got our final decision on where we want it to sit. We could also use some hot glue. That'll work kind of nice. In fact, I'm going to get that going right now. The hot glue will hold it, but we'll be able to easily peel it off um, in a few minutes when we figure out where we want everything to be. Because we're going to CA this thing on here when we're done. So what we want to make sure is that it frees everything because we got this bend to keep it in. make this about as long as we want here, just so long as it frees everything. Okay, so obviously we've got plenty of strength in that cable, or that uh, one millimeter deal music wire. So I'm going to take this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it longer than I know we need, okay? So we're never going to make it go that far, okay? But just to get this out of the way. Because it's a bear to try to trip over yourself with those things. I'm going to grab another pair of pliers. And one thing I immediately want to consider doing is having a bend in here uh, for adjustment. So I'm going to just hold it somewhere up here where it's going to be adjustable. I'm going to bend it at a 90. I'm just going to untape it. Bend it at a 90 like this. Grab hold of it just like that. I'm actually wrap it all the way around itself. Okay? So that gives us a pretty good amount of adjustment there. And then we'll just grab it again. Line it up as square as you can. I need to go a little bit more than that. Okay, there we go. So that's close enough for what we're doing. See, we got a little bit of adjustment now. Now it's not, it doesn't have to be the easiest thing to use, it just has to be a little bit of adjustment. You'll probably need a little fine tune adjustment here and there. Even though there's 14 other ways you can adjust this, the mechanical adjustment's almost always the best way. Okay, so now we're going to just more or less tape that back to approximately where we wanted it. And I'm going to take a pencil, I'm going to just make a mark where I've got it, because that's going to be my desired location. Just a real light mark, and of course we'll be able to change that. I actually want this top position to be beyond where we're going to run the servo. So go ahead and make a mark on here. Or just grab it because the pencil mark is going to be hard to see. And we want to make that nice and 90 degrees, nice 90 degree bend. So we're just going to take and double this back right in line with the rest of the structure. Okay, we're going to feed that into the outermost hole of the servo control arm. Obviously, it'll need to be trimmed. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, double this back here right now. Make what we'd call a Z-bend. We'll just go straight down with it. And then I'll just take... Normally, I don't cut these with cutters. I cut them with my grinder. But these small ones, you can usually get away with it. And you won't totally destroy your your tool that's basically that little piece that we made there so you can see there's a bushing right here and that bushing is what's going to allow this to move free and I'm going to stick it into the servo in the top of the control arm there 
And then I'm going to tape this down approximately where I think I want it to be, which is beyond where we're actually going to need the throw, because we're going to back off our throws quite a bit. Okay, so obviously that's not going to be enough yet. You can see we're, we're getting movement, which is good. Okay, and what I'm thinking is I'm actually going to need that quite a bit higher as it's designed because I need to be able to close this thing at some point. And I just don't know if I have enough to get it closed with that length. I might have to shorten it a little bit. But that's part of this is you just kind of got to figure it out. See, and there's a point where you stop making positive progress there when you put it up at the top like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and actually shorten this here. And this is where it's just basically guess and check. You know, you guess and check until you get it close, and then you go with it. So, and it's not like this stuff is overly expensive. I'm like the cheapest person on the planet, and I don't really think it's all that expensive. It's a couple bucks for the long sticks, and you're talking a few sticks of it. It does add up because you have to get a bunch of it. Because if you're like me, you'll make 57 different wrong pieces before you make the right piece. The good news is once you figure it out, then you can more or less copy it for the for the next one. Because you got to do this for the other wing still. I don't know if you guys had forgotten about that yet. I hadn't. Okay, so then we're going to double this back again. If you have a Z-Bend tool that can do all these different weird sizes and stuff, that's pretty cool. But uh, And they, they do work nicely. But my experience has been that they usually can't get all this little finite stuff done. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this again so I can get that nasty bend out of it. Okay, so I've got this nasty sweep here. And when they're swept like that, you're pretty much in trouble because it always it's really hard to get those things squared back up. So the best way I've found is just make it square again. Come back in with your pliers. Hold them real tight. Get them seated over there. And see if you can't get a hold of it like this. And a lot of times you can get your nice bend then. There you go. It's good enough for what we're doing. Or it should be. Okay, so now we can swing that in there, kind of on the bottom portion of the spoiler now. This tape is not sticking worth a crap, uh, which doesn't surprise me. I figured that would happen uh, because it's getting late. And I want to be done with this project for tonight. <laughs> We're just going to slop that on there and see if we get lucky. Lick your thumb. Spread the hot glue. Remember, this hot glue is just temporary. We're going to peel it off in a few minutes. We just want it to set up. The other thing is the servo is not 100% set yet. We can move it around a little bit for some fine tuning. Remember, when this is all said and done, we're actually going to have CA on here. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty good. It's a lot better than it was. We just have it in the wrong position, period. Which is okay. We kind of knew this was going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to the left aileron. I'm going to set it to 100, plus or minus. And then what I can do is I can pull the whole control arm off. Once I have that control arm off, once I get that control arm off of there, we should be looking pretty good because then we can adjust this to a point where it might close even. It's pretty hard to get the control arm off of this digital servo. I've noticed on the more expensive servos, they make them a real pain in the butt. So I want to send it so that it's fully deployed. 
and then I want to put it in the deployed position or where I'd like the full deploy position to be. Okay? So you can see we're in a what might be constituting a fully deployed position. And it looks like we've still got play from the aileron in that setting. We'll change that later. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing about this that I didn't notice before is that I'm going to probably have to trim this down a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and take that off. Because we're going to have to trim this down or it's going to go forward and it's going to cut a hole in the wing. So that's no good. So we'll just grab this and... Give her a quick trim down. So we've got it shortened up a little bit. Do just a little bit more. Okay. So we've got that adjusted. And so the other thing we may end up having to do, which is something I'm not used to, is going into an inner hole here. Um, because we just may have too much throw because of the position that we got the servo. Now we can put the servo the other way if we need to. That's part of the reason why I didn't want to screw it in. I figured we'd be fighting around with it a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this on here temporarily. And there is no manual for this part. You just, it's just guess and check until you get it where you want it. I've done this part a time or two, and it's always a... It seems like it's going to be the five-minute project, and it's always a lot harder than it looks. Because you're figuring out all the geometry. There's tricks to it. I just don't know them. Okay, so we're at the full sweep now. Okay, so it looks like right now we're probably close to where we need to be. Now we just need to move it up on the on the top portion of this. Okay, so that hot glue, until such a time as we know exactly where it needs to be, you'll just peel off a little bit here and there as you're working. I'm actually going to go ahead and knock off a sharp edge here on this thing too while we're at it. I've been hit by it a couple of times so far and I'm getting sick of getting hit by it. Alright, cool. So basically we want to go to the top setting, or near the top setting. Do just a little dab of glue. And remember this is just temporary. We're gonna we're gonna get it glued down when we figure out what we need for exact positioning. Okay, now we're going to let it cool a little bit. Bring it down, bring it down. But you basically get the idea. Now it's just a guess and check on, until you get it to a point where you feel like it'll work. And obviously this is not enough deflection right at the moment. The good news is we actually can open that up more in our servo setup. But it's not going to actually open anymore because of the angle we've got on the, the actual lever arm. So I'm going to fight that for a little bit and I'll show you what we come to. Alright guys, that's all you're going to get for tonight. Basically I've got it working. It's not 100% closure yet. Ailerons work as they should, depending on the setting. Full landing backs off when I try to lean it the other way. When I try to lean it this way, the aileron comes up, forcing the wing down theoretically. And then under normal flight circumstances, this is basically closed and then pops up for aileron output. And of course, I can change that with mixing. But for now, you can see that we're at 150 percent on the left aileron or maybe you can't see that but it's 150 up 150 down and you can see I moved the servo 
to the other direction because I had a heck of a time getting it to work. I kept changing my geometry and uh, that was a bummer. So basically, it wasn't hard, just lots of little steps fiddling around with it. So now I've just got to work through my, got to work a little bit through my process to get everything glued right where I want, glued or screwed. And then when I'm done, I'll CA in the brass portion of that. Um, but here, I'll give you the full view here. And again, like I said, this will be the video, the conclusion, until we have the whole thing together. And I'll give you a quick follow-up video on the way everything works. Uh, left and right wings installed on the plane. And then what we'll do is we'll have a flight video shortly thereafter. But... Uh, I'm really excited to see it work. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Signing out, Brian Phillips here.